you, dear God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your word, Father God. We thank you, dear God, for just God waiting for the good one, God, closing the right one. Father, you have gave us another portion, God, through the tree, Father God. If none of us come to you this morning, God, that we live, God, we move, God, have our being involved. We come this morning, God, to worship you, God, to praise you, Father God, and it's all because of us, the great God, you are, Father. You can allow us, God, to die in our sleep, the Father, you saw fit, God. One more time, one more hour, God, one more second, Lord God, and you hear, Father God. God, I'm on you, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for your presence, oh God. All the night long, God, you walk over each day, one of us, God. I used to come to someone I speak from, God. God, you can get a look, God. You can move all our God. I'll go to God. God, you gave us some peace and light rest, oh God. We thank you, Father. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you, God, that you give them those that are, get those sprint, God, that are struggling, God, in their mind, God, give them, God, closure, God, give them understanding, God. You said, Father God, in the word that you will never leave us, God, not forsake us, God. We thank you, dear God. Thank you for the your God, your word. Thank you for the promise your word, God. Thank you, God, for the holiness of God of your word, God. We never realize, God, that you are present, God, even in the midst of God, oh God, every situation, oh God. We love you, thank you, because we pray for the Lord God, that it is your God, to lead God and comfort and bless the only thing, God. That you'll get the praise, God, the glory, God, and the honor, God. And all awesome, God, powerful name of you, pray. Amen. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Just want to share a few words uh, Isaiah 41. You know, the first, the first few words, you know, uh, I said first day, uh, you know, uh, fear not, by which you, you know, I just want to, you know, encourage the Bible this morning, you know, that we no longer have to fear because God has told us that we're in peace with us, no matter where we go, because we're on, no matter where we um, lay down and get up, realize that God is with us, you know, even, in, even in tough times of, of, of believing when it feels like God is not there, he's, you know, you know, he's there with us because the words that he would never leave us comfortable, he would send back the Holy Spirit in his name, and, and you know, that name, that, you know, that name, that name of Jesus, so that he's with us always, so, no matter what situation you may face this week, this year, this month, this season, this hour, this second, just know that God is, is with you. you. Know that He said He will never leave you, nor forsake you. So that He's always with you. That He's a very, that He's a very present help in a time of trouble. So hold on to God, unchain the hand, and not only hold on to God, unchain the hand. Hold on to the promise and, and the, you know, and the principle, you know, and the true word of God that He that He, he inspired means the right to give unto us that even this day. The same word that worked back then and worked right now. So be encouraged. You know, fear not for God of which be encouraged. Well, bless you, Dr. Lawrence North Sea Centerville, Mississippi, in the house on this fantastic, fabulous, faithful fellowshipping Friday morning. And yes, it is a good Friday morning. Praise the name of the Lord. This is our annual Good Friday worship service here, Simply The Word Church, a church without walls, global community of prayer warriors. We're making a mighty impact on this whole wide nation. <clears throat> and we thank God for each and every person here today. Amen, amen. We're just two days away, y'all. Two days away from Resurrection Sunday morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Everybody ought to be in church. <laughs> You notice I left the R out of that. Everybody ought to be in church um, on Sunday morning. We will be nine o'clock, local church platform, Hickory Grove and McEwen Baptist Churches, Facebook Live <clears throat> and Prayer Line Live. Amen. I want you to join us if you can, nine o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. Watch the time zone in your respective areas. And uh, let's come together and lift the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Bless his holy, rich, righteous, and divine name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We're going to uh, go into our lesson at this time. We've already had great prayer and great word of exaltation. Dr. Lawrence, North Sea Centerville, Mississippi. Bless the name of the Lord. <clears throat> and um, already had our awesome prelude song. Uh, our spirit, our soul is ready to dig deeper to the treasures of God's divine word, Genesis. We're in the book of Genesis, walking through, walking through. Um, for the mo most of the time, I should say, uh, we would deviate uh, during this particular time and uh, study scriptures that are di directly related to uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection and, you know, the betrayal and the trial and, and all of that. 
uh, of Jesus to Christ, but the Lord did not, did not lead us to do that this year. And so we just stayed where we were, stayed where we are, walking through the book of Genesis, this series entitled The Great Deception, The Great Deception, amen. And this is part number 55, I think. <laughs> Every time I think about that, it just makes me chuckle. Amen. We will be in somewhat short form um, today. We're on assignment today. Amen. I'll be preaching, God willing, um, at the Strangers Home Church in Zachary. I guess you can call it Zachary. <clears throat> Cheneyville area. <laughs> For you that are local, you know what I'm talking about. Right there off of Plank Road, sitting between Plank and... Highway 19, 12 noon, we will be on site for the last seven sayings of Jesus the Christ. And uh, along with great pastor, great teacher, Pastor Lorenzo Bennett. So um, if you want to come and join us, amen. Come on and join us. Bring your mask. Well, don't bring your mask. Wear your mask. <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase that. Somebody may walk up to the door with the mask in their hand. <laughs> Well, Rev, you say bring it. <laughs> Amen. No, don't bring it. Wear your mask. All right. Praise God. We pray that. Uh, let me get all this out of the way. Uh, amen. So we can run out to church at the end. Um, we pray that everyone is either has uh, either already been vaccinated or uh, uh, has a date, a plan to become vaccinated real soon. Look like everybody doing it now, so there's no excuse. <laughs> Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, uh, every local clinic on the corner. Come on. You know, if you don't watch Johnny, Johnny will pull out a needle and say, look, I got a vaccine for you. But don't, don't take it from Johnny, please. Don't take your vaccine from Johnny. Amen. <laughs> Johnny has not been certified. Don't do that. <laughs> Amen. And Johnny said, come on, you get your first shot with me. No, don't do that. Amen. Bless God. But, but people of God get fascinated all right do it do it do it do it all right do it let's just do it amen all right <clears throat> now we are moving on i was talking to somebody yesterday I'm trying to move to that talking to somebody yesterday it's a true story i wouldn't lie to you talking to somebody yesterday on the phone and um we're talking about the vaccination and all that and i said man you've been vaccinated <laughs> Because I told him I had been, you know, fully vaccinated. He said, no, no, not yet, not yet. I'm, I'm waiting to see if y'all going to turn into zombies first. <laughs> I said, man, man you talking crazy, man. Go ahead and get you. <laughs> it's a lot of people, it's a lot of people feel that way, though. They're sitting back, you know, you know, and, and his uh, uh, exact words was, I'm still somewhat skeptical. That was, his, that was his exact words to me. I'm still somewhat skeptical. So, you know, everybody have to make up their own mind. You, you know, you, no one can force you to get it or anything like that. But, um, but I made it clear to him that, that you know, my belief, you know, that, hey, you know, I've been vaccinated. I'm, I'm, I, I believe everyone should and that type of thing. So, uh, but there's a lot of people like that sitting back saying, you know, I, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen to y'all first. You know? Make sure y'all all right. Well, and I told him, I said, well, I'm fine. If you, if you want to know about me, I'm fine. I haven't heard uh, of anything uh, from anyone <clears throat> uh, other than that, contrary to that. So let's move on. I pray that helps somebody. We got a little time for teaching this morning. Genesis chapter number 35. Genesis 35. Bless God. Genesis 35. And um, as we ended on Wednesday, 12 high noon. Remember, we are here every Tuesday and Friday morning, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time, right? And also Wednesday, every Wednesday, 12 high noon Central Standard Time. Watch the time zones in your respective areas. And we have been right here, right here, right here for 10 years. We will be celebrating. Let me get all this out of the way. April 30th, May 1st, May 2nd. Now, as much as I say that, watch this. And as much as all the others say it, Sister Carolyn, Mother Chris, Sister Ruby, all the other sister, but all these other people say that it's gonna be somebody. <laughs> They're always, it's always why, why about that? It's gonna be somebody. Amen. As we get closer, the week of I read what what you say, them dates here. 
Good God, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, come on. April 30th, May 1st, May 2nd, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be with us. April 30th, 7 o'clock. Music and more. All right? You need to show up to find out what the more is going to be. <laughs> All right? You don't want to hear about the more. You need to be, see it for yourself and witness it for yourself. And then um, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, we will begin our leadership conference. It is for everybody. All right? And remember now, our overall theme uh, for this celebration is momentum in ministry. Momentum in ministry. All right? And, um, and, and we're going to learn how... Uh, how to how to get it and how to keep it how to maintain momentum all right and uh and then on sunday two o'clock in the afternoon is, is will, will be our super celebration super celebration amen our committee is working hard diligently the flyers will go out prayerfully um <clears throat> sometime this weekend um I, I really want them to go out today or yesterday <laughs> let me say it like that but, but we, 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 we really need them to go out at least by this weekend. Be on the lookout for the flyers. The flyers will uh, contain all of the information that you need, all right? And you can start sharing those flyers, sending them out, forwarding uh, them to your third cousin in Omaha, Nebraska, you know, and all, all the people like that, you know, amen. <clears throat> and uh, so, so we can get everybody involved, all right? Okay, got all that out of the way. Just in case I forget, <laughs> Just in case I'm running out of the church, uh, amen, uh, let me lift this offering right now. STW Ministry, all right? Cash out, STW Ministry, cash out Buck Glenn King. Got it? Oh, somebody said, Rev, you do that at the end. I'm doing it now. Amen, I'm doing it now. STW Ministry, Buck Glenn King are the two cash apps. Uh, mail in, you can choose to mail in. P.O. Box 166. DS Louisiana 70727. That's P.O. Box 166. All right. That's my check or money order. Never mail cash. Never. Don't do that. Never mail cash. Check or money order only in the mail. All right. Make sure that you write a check that you got some money in the bank now. We want no check bounce. <laughs> I just tell it. I just, you know, hey, amen. Come on. Let's be real. <clears throat> Let's be real, y'all. Let's be real with one another. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. All right. We're moving on to the word of God. Jacob has been instructed by God to get up because verse one says, arise. We're in chapter 35. He said, go to Bethel. Now, keep in mind, Bethel is where God told him to go in the first place. He didn't do it. He went to a place called Sukkoth, right? And because of Jacob's disobedience, all right, because he did not listen to the Lord, that, uh, he, you know, he's the patriarch of this moment. And so, and, and so because of his disobedience, it caused all of this other stuff to take place. All the killing and, the, you know, all, we talked about all that. And so Jacob finally um, hears the voice of God and obeys the voice of God and, uh, he gets up, takes his household, <clears throat> and um, with him, he instructs them to, to, to release all of the strange gods, uh, you know, those idol gods, um, because, because listen, we're getting ready. God told him to build an altar, right? So, so Jacob said, listen, release all that stuff. Release anything that's not of God. There it is, all right? Even 2021, release everything that's not of God, all right? Because we're getting ready to go into the presence of God. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? See, when you go into the presence of God, you, you, you must release all that baggage before you get there. Mm, good God Almighty. I wish I had a church. Amen. Verse three, <clears throat> let us arise and go up to Bethel. Y'all see it? This Jacob talking to his household, all right? So finally, He's ready to do what the Lord said. Why does it take us so long to obey God? Why does it take us so long to obey his voice? Jacob is now ready to go before the Lord, uh, uh, go, to, go to Bethel, 
uh, physically, uh, spiritually, and morally in every way, all right? And so uh, for the past 10 years, uh, you know, he's been disobedient, to be honest with you, because uh, the Bible says, or theologians declare, rather, that 10 years have passed between the 20 years spent with Uncle Laban and now, okay? So totally, altogether, approximately 30 years have passed since his mama, <laughs> since Rebecca told him, you need to leave town because your brother Esau gonna kill you. 30 years have passed. All right, here it is, y'all. We ready? Verse three, let, let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto, the, unto God uh, who, who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Jacob, Jacob is acknowledging. Are you with me? Jacob is acknowledging, right, the fact that God has always been with him. Mm. Lord have mercy. He telling the people, he telling it that look, that's what a patriarch ought to do to his family. Call the family together. He say, listen, I need y'all to know that God has always been with me. I need y'all to know he's been everywhere I went. Amen. The Lord has been there. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, verse four, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the oak, which was my Shechem. All right. And uh, let's see now. Verse number five. And they journeyed. Y'all see it? And the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Why? Because God protected them. Mm. Mm. I'm pausing on purpose. Amen. God literally built a fence. Matter of fact, God didn't build a fence. God was the fence. You remember Fred Hamill? <clears throat> Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I know you can. Come on. I know you will. Come on, choir members. Fight my battle if I keep still. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, how much? All around, yeah. Ooh. Lord have mercy. <laughs> so God protected them. If he had not protected them, they would have been slaughtered by the enemy. You ever think about that? You ever think about you go somewhere and come back? You know, some folk, some folk travel around the world pretty much, come back home, never, never tell God thank you. Never tell God thank you for protecting me. You know, I told y'all before and I periodically remind you, if you walk out your front door, go to the mailbox, get your mail, close the mailbox, walk back to your front door and make it in safely. Man, you ought to start shouting. <laughs> you ought to start a Holy Ghost dance right there at the door once you make, I'm telling you, man, we take too much for granted. We think God got to do what he does. God does not have to do anything. You ought to lift your hand. Do it right now. Tell the Lord, thank you. Facebook, type it in. Come on. Type it in. God bless you. Type it in. Lord, have mercy. Type it in. Come on. Lift your hand. Tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. So Jacob came to Luz which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people who were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, all right? Uh, and and um, now this means the God of the house of God. Because there God, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother about 30 years ago. About 30 years ago, Jacob, Jacob hit the street. Jacob and Rebecca, you know, as I said, you know, Rebecca was just doing, just being a mama, being a good mama. You know, she's protecting her child. 
You know, it's, it's, ironically, she was <laughs> the bad thing is that she was, you know, I got good news, I got bad news. You, you know, people say that I got good news, I got bad news. The good news, she was protecting her child. The bad news is that she was protecting her child from her other child. <laughs> Y'all with me? Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. All right. Uh, verse eight, but Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. She was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. And the name of it was called Alan Bakoff. I don't know if I'm saying it right and really don't care. To be honest with you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because that ain't going to get us into heaven, knowing how to pronounce that. It's really not. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, all right. So, so we know, you know, Rebecca was Rebecca was uh, Jacob's mother, and uh, um, and uh, so, so by by Deborah being Rebecca's nurse, um, it's safe. We can safely suggest that Jacob was attached <clears throat> to some degree to Deborah. Okay, because Deborah was. I say now the Bible said she was Rebecca's nurse, but uh, in essence, that's another way of saying she was Rebecca's servant. Okay, she was a servant for his mother for many years. Okay, and um, we frown upon that in these days, you know. But there's nothing wrong with that if it's as long as it's done right. No, long as it's long as it's done right. Amen. Um, uh, we see armor bearers, you know, and um, and some folks say it don't take all that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's biblical. When you start talking about Jonathan and David and Saul, and, and during that time, they're like, hey, hey man, um, uh, they, they, they introduced to us, um, I should say, uh, in, in layman's term, you know, the, the ministry of armor bearer, the, the armor bearer ministry. Now, now it's the same uh, as this being a servant, all right, uh, from day one, come on, talk to me. Here it is, we're in the book of Genesis. And these biblical characters that really existed had servants, all right? Noah, all of them, you know, all of them, uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac, remember Eleazar? Eleazar, Eleazar was Abraham's servant and Abraham sent him uh, sent him to the land, uh, a, a man, to find the, the wife of Isaac, which would ultimately, of course, be, be Rebecca. Eleazar, the Bible says, was the lead servant in the house of Abraham. All right. And so I just wanted to throw that in there for free because some people got it twisted, you know. <clears throat> and um, when you commit yourself to being there, for the man of God, or the woman of God in this case, which was Rebecca, okay? Rebecca's servant was Deborah for many years, all right? And when you commit yourself to that ministry, I wish I had a church, God will bless you more. I'm so serious with, I've seen it with my own eyes. I have seen it. Do you hear me? I have seen it and I've had, I've had guys come and go, you know, in and out of that ministry, you know, yeah, just like a revolving door and, and, you know, and, 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 and they've been good. They've been good. And it's been a blessing. Amen. But when you find one that's going to stick, come on, <clears throat> come on, talk to me. That's going to stick. Amen. And realize uh, that it's a ministry ordained by God. Amen. Bless the Lord. I want to say that. I want to throw that in to help somebody. Verse 9, God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram. We've talked about that place and blessed him. All right. Remember, uh, we say again, when Jacob wrestled with the Lord. Remember that? <clears throat> and it should be noted here that Jacob did not, uh, that the Lord rather did not appear to Jacob while he was at Sukkoth. Okay, why? Because he because God never told him to go to Sukkot. Some of us we find ourselves in places um, doing some things or uh, in some places with some people, what have you, and we're waiting on God to show up. Mm. 
Hmm. Have you ever thought about it? Uh, listen, first of all, you need to ask yourself, did God tell me to go here? Hmm. Maybe that's why he ain't showing up. I'm pausing on purpose. Let me roll with your phone. Just, 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 just hold tight. Let it marinate. Just for a moment. You need to ask yourself, did God tell me to go, to come here? Amen. The only time when you study that, look back at the preceding verses, not now, but when you look at the time period that Jacob spent at Sakoth, the only time God appeared to him was to tell him to leave. Oh. Mm, I really can go now. I'm really, I'm so sick. I can leave now. I'm ready to grab my hat and hit the door. Come on. I got what I came for. The only time God appeared to Jacob at Sukkoth, Sukkoth was a place he did not tell him to go to. He told him to go to Bethel. The only time God appeared to Jacob at Sukkoth was when he showed up just to tell him to leave Sukkoth. Amen. We have to be in God's will in order to be in his blessing. Amen. God is not going to bless us the way he wants to bless us. God is not going to reveal to us the way he wants to reveal to us uh, uh, unless we are in his will. Come on, somebody. God said to him, verse 10, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Y'all see it? And he, that's God, called his name Israel. God will change your name. Come on, write it down. I told y'all that some time ago. God is so awesome. God will change your name, man. Remember uh, Abram? Uh, God changed his name to Abraham. Remember? Remember Sarai? Remember? God changed her name to Sarah. I wish I had a chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. The Lord is speaking to Jacob. Say, man, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name is now Israel. All right. And so um, <clears throat> verse 11, God said unto him, I am God almighty. All right. Now, what does that mean? God almighty. That means El Shaddai. Write that down. See if you can spell that. <laughs> it is uh, E-L, all right, dash, Shadi, S-H-A-D-D-A-I. -D -D that means all-sufficient one. El Shadi means that God is all-sufficient. Mean that, all, that he's all you need. Y'all with me? Yo, man, you don't need nobody. As long as I've got King Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody, yeah. I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. I've been viewed, I've been scorned, talked about, showed your bone. I've been up town, almost on the ground. But long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, no, no. Don't need nobody else. Hallelujah. So God, <laughs> Woo. do y'all see that I love ministry? I love the Lord. I love worship. Oh, man, I love, you got to love this, man. You got to love it. You got to fall in love with it. Y'all see folk come to church? They never smile. Never smile. They never, they never look like they're happy. They never look like they, they're glad to be there. They're there. You know, they're physically there now. They're, in the, they're there. But, but they, they never look like they, 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 they really want. Like somebody made them come. Yeah, yeah. Let me go. Let me move y'all. Oh, Lord. God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. Hmm. That sound for me? Y'all, that's something he told Adam and Eve, remember? Now they had done wrong. Now, 
God told them to be fruitful and multiply after they sinned in the garden. Y'all with me? What is that? That's grace. He could have killed them. You know, God did kill some folk now. Oh, I'm in the Bible. Don't mess with me today. It's Good Friday. <laughs> Don't you? It's bad enough. It's Friday, but it's Good Friday. Don't mess with me. We're two days away from Sunday morning. Don't mess with the preacher. Hallelujah. So yeah, God killed some folk, man. Not because he's a bad God. Because he don't play. That's why. God don't play games, man. He say something as it. I wish I had a witness. Worst thing we can ever notice, I said we, is uh, receive is, the, is, is when the wrath of God comes down upon us. We don't ever want that. Hello, somebody. We don't ever want that. Remember when Ananias and Sapphira, because I got some, I got some naysay. I got one person in the church challenging me, talking about God ain't never killed nobody. Yes, he did. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Lie. And the Lord struck them down dead. I'm over in the New Testament now. You remember that? Sapphira came to the door. Same question was asked of her. She lied. She lied too. And, um, and the statement was made to her and said, okay, since you lied, now, now, now since you lied also, you, you, you go over there and, 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 and lay down. Come on, talk to me. I'm in the Bible. Come on, you're you going to die too. I wish I had a win. Amen. All right. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of you and kings shall come out of your loins. And they did. The Lord spoke and they did. 12, in the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to you I will give it. And to your seed after you will I give the land. Remember, now Jake, in the midst of all of his disobedience, Jake is in the bloodline. Jake is in the, line, the seed line, the lineage. Jake was destined for kingship. It just, he just took, you know, a roundabout way to get there because he was disobedient as his daddy and as his granddaddy, you know, and it just kept on going. Um, the devil was fight, had been fighting against him and, um, and all of that. Uh, but, but we got to keep in mind that whatever God has ordained, it will come to pass. The enemy can't stop anything. Now he can slow some stuff down, but he can't stop it right there now. Come on. Yeah, the enemy, the enemy can, he can, he can, he can slow, you know, he can place a comma there because he, when he causes us to be disobedient and, um, and we yield to him, you know, when we yield to him, um, yes, all, all of that, all of that can happen, but, uh, but, but otherwise he can't stop nothing. Amen. All right. 13 and God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, okay? Um, that's, that's a type of Christ, as Noah was a type of Christ, okay? Uh, and he poured a drink offering thereon. Now, this is the first mention of a drink offering in scripture. Make note of that. This is the very first mention, not the last, but this is the very first mention of a drink offering in scripture, okay? Um, and he poured all thereon, okay? And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. Bethel means house of God, write that down. Bethel means house of God. Verse 16, they journeyed from Bethel. There was but a little way to come to Aprath, uh, Ephrath and Rachel travailed and she had hard labor. And it's Rachel now. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, 
Fear not, you shall have this son also, my God. Now the midwife is actually speaking um, in retrospect of, of the prophecy that was given to Rachel when Joseph was born. Okay, we, you know, this first time you heard that name, you know, you heard me say the name Joseph. We, we're getting ready, this thing getting ready to open up a little bit. A uh, very, 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 very crucial, very uh, critical part of scripture. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Okay. And the Bible said Rachel died and was buried in the way uh, to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. All right. <clears throat> and so Rachel was actually buried in the same place or the same city where Jesus would later on, you know, also be buried. Okay. That's just good to know. All right. Jacob set a pillar upon the grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. All right. And Israel journeyed. As Israel is referring to Jacob. Now his name is Israel. Remember, God changed his name. All right. Jacob is a name of weakness. Israel is a name of strength. Right there. Write that down. Jacob is a name of uh, weakness. Israel is a name of strength. All right. And so, um, okay, let me see now. And, uh, and, and Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edom. 22, it came to pass when Israel dwelt that, dwelt that land that Reuben went and laid with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. All right. Keep in mind, Reuben is the firstborn. Okay, but with the sin that Reuben committed, he forfeited his birthright. Y'all with me? He forfeited. And that caused Jesus Christ not to be born through the lineage of Reuben. Sin is, man, sin is a dangerous thing. God don't play with sin, man. God don't play no games with sin. He, he really doesn't. He don't. <laughs> Write this down. God is serious about sin. The Bible says sin stinks in his nostril. He's serious. And all of us have sin. You know what I mean? So I ain't just talking to you. I'm talking to me too. Point to yourself. Say, I'm talking to me. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm always talking to you. Tell your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm always... I'm always talking to you, neighbor, but this time I'm talking to me. Come on, say it. Say, I'm talking to me this time, neighbor. Bless the Lord. Look at, uh, we're going to try to, we'll try our best to close this chapter out, and then we'll, then we'll let you go to the house. How about that? The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. Jacob, Jacob's firstborn was Reuben. But Reuben was born uh, to Leah, not Rachel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You got to get, you got to, do y'all hear me? And Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. All right. Uh, see, 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 Joseph was the son of Rachel. See, 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 keep, stick that name Joseph right here on the side of your brain. Joseph, we'll come back to it now. Come back to it. All right. All right. Uh, sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, Dan, and Naphtali. You start talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, we're getting ready to get a little deeper now. Y'all with me? We're getting ready to go deeper. Maybe not so much deep today, because we're getting ready to close out the 12 tribes of Israel. Y'all remember? Okay, sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid. Gad and Asher. Um, these are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Pan Padamara. So Jacob has had children for Leah and Rachel, but not only Leah and Rachel, two sisters, also their handmaidens as well. Jacob, 27, Jacob came unto Isaac, his father, unto Mamre, to the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And the days of Isaac were 104 score years. Now that's 180 years, write that down. Jake, Jake lived to be 180 years old. 
180. 180. And was, I'm just going to say this, <laughs> you know, was having children almost up until the end of his day, you know, of his life. Things have changed, haven't they? Amen. Things have changed. 29 is our final verse. I promise we're closing. Isaac gave up the ghost. I mean, he died. Um, and was gathered. Wait now. Okay. Yeah. And was gathered unto his people. I say Isaac. Okay. Isaac lived to be 180 years old. I think I, I think I said the wrong thing. I think I said Jacob. Isaac. Uh, we're talking about the death of Isaac now. Isaac lived, look at 28. Uh, Isaac, the days of Isaac were 180 years, was it uh, 104 score, you know, four score, all right? Y'all keep that in mind. We talked about what a score is, all right? A score is uh, 20 years, okay? So this is four score. Four times 20 is what? <laughs> 80. So 180 years. Look at 29. Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. So they buried him. They, they buried Isaac um, there in the burying place. Um, amen. Um, the, the same place where Abraham and Sarah were buried, which were, uh, which were his mother and father. Okay. Talking about Isaac, now they buried. Okay. Okay. And um, all right. And so, and so, and so Jacob was with Isaac when he died. Keep that in mind. Jacob was, Jacob was with his daddy when his daddy died. Amen. And then Esau also came to the grave site. Stick a pin there. We shall continue, God willing, on Tuesday morning. Be the will of God. Be the will of God. Tuesday is April 6th. 2021, we will be, be the will of God, we will be live and in living color right here, simply the word church, a church without walls. We have no walls here. Amen. We have, there are no boundaries here. Amen. We are a global community of prayer warriors making a mighty impact on this whole wide nation. I want to thank God for everybody that support this ministry. I want to thank God for Sister Diane Williams. Thank God for Sister Shirley Knighton. Uh, uh, Lord, don't fail me now. Thank God, Sister, Sister uh, Vinnell Singleton, Graham fam. Uh, thank God for, uh, and I'm talking about, you know, folk that, you know, hadn't been with us very, very, very long, but uh, I'm not, I'm not, not, not you, you that been here since day one, don't get mad, I ain't call your name. I don't, <laughs> ain't call my name. Baby, you, you've been here from the beginning now. Right, come on, hey, hey, man, you know I love you, appreciate you, you know that, hey, amen. Praise God, and um and we've had some great prayer warriors to go on home. And we, uh, we're going we're gonna to celebrate and, and commemorate, you know, and mention during our, during our celebration uh, at the end of this month. This is April, yeah, April 30th, May 1st, May 2nd. All right. We thank God for um, Sister Sharon Davis, Dallas. Good God Almighty. Brother Oscar, Brother Cliff Davis. Thank God for Brother Fred Whaley. Brother Sylvester Hobbs, Sister uh, Frida K. Coleman Smith Hobbs. <laughs> you, see, you gotta say the whole name. You can't just, you can't just say Sister Frida. You gotta say Sister Frida K. Coleman Smith Hobbs. All that means something. <laughs> Amen. And so many of Sister Carolyn Caldwell. Mm. Jesus Christ. Now, if I call your name, say, Reverend, I'm in the house, type it in. If I call your name, say, I'm in the house, Reverend. Come on. Sister Barb. Lord, don't let me forget Sister Barb. Jesus. And uh, Sister, uh, Lord have mercy, Sister Barb. Text me that woman's name. Oh, my God, your friend, your co-worker. Sister, uh, Jesus Christ. What's her name? I don't want to forget that. Mm. Mm. My, my, my. Oh, my God. God, what's that woman named, Sister Barb? Help me out. Mm-hmm. Yes. My, 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 my. All right. The Lord knows. Amen. The Lord knows. Amen. The Lord knows. I'm looking. 
But anyway, brothers and sisters, we thank God for everybody. I know I probably missed somebody. Um, amen. And we want you to continue to support our ministry and what we are doing here at Simply Be Word. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Go to our website, stwm.webs.com, stwm.webs.com. Go to the website, navigate through, check it out, read the history, read, check out all the pictures and go to the photo galleries and, and um, go to the Bible teachings. That was the time that, that we would upload Bible teachings every week. You know, um, we, we stopped, you know, stop, stop doing that. We <laughs> got into some other stuff, but, but the Bible teachings are still there. Click on the link that says more. I think it's more. And you click on more. Now you get that drop down box. You got a whole lot of stuff on that. And you click on that and uh, let it bless you, brothers and sisters. Let it bless you. God bless you, pastors and preachers. If you're here, love you in the Lord. Thank you for your support, ministers of the gospel. Uh, thank you, uh, Linda Ward, woman of God. I want to call that name. Been a great support um, over the years. And um, and as I know as soon as I walk out of the church, I'm going to say, God, man, I forgot this. But, you know, the Lord knows. Y'all with me? The Lord knows. And uh, Sister Stacy Sensley, of course, she's been a part of our family, you know. But, but we thank God for her and her support and so many others, so many others. Thank y'all so much. We got to go. We got to get out of here now. Um, don't forget, every day, 60-second national prayer call on the prayer line today as well, every day, seven days a week. Over a year now we've been doing that. We will continue, God willing. All right, 12 o'clock noon Central Time, every day, Sunday morning. What time are we going to be in worship? Nine o'clock. Prayer line, Facebook Live. All right, Resurrection Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Meet us at the House of Prayer. Be the will of God. Yeah, be the will of God. Amen. Don't forget, we'll be preaching today, 12 noon, at the Strangers Home Baptist Church, Pastor Lorenzo Bennett. Meet us there. Wear your mask. Meet us there. Let's have a good time in the Lord. It's not supposed to be a very long worship service. Um, uh, all of us have time limit, you know, because seven preachers. And uh, that's the way he did, he did it the right way. Tell your neighbor he did it the right way. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Amen. Because some folk, <laughs> some folk, you don't give them a limit. They <laughs> come on. Hey, y'all know it. I ain't gonna say no more. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. So, you know, we 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 are gonna lift the name of Jesus and then we're gonna get out of there. How about that? Bless the name. I do not know if it's gonna be on Facebook. I don't know, really. I, uh, somebody asked me that. I don't know. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I have not heard. He has not said. But, but I know we will be on site, be the will of God. All right. Love you all so much. All right. Um, we've already done everything we needed to do on the front end. We lifted our offering, uh, opened the door of the church at this time. I want you all to be a, uh, make a commitment to be with us. Praise God. Simply be where sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed. First fruit offering, sow a seed. Thank you all so much for being true and being honest and real with your consecration fast. Our consecration fast ended uh, on the 31st, which was Wednesday. And, uh, and and I thank God. One day we're going to we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about we're going to have a, a moment of testimonies and talk about what God revealed to us, how God blessed us during that season. And uh, I know I got I got test. I, you know I wish I had time to share it now. I, I do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I've gone to another level in God. I really have, and I thank Him for it. I thank Him for it. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Listen, getting ready to go, brothers and sisters. If you meet me and forget me, it's okay. But if you meet Jesus, get ready. Get ready. Brother Henry London, I want to call that name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hey, oh, my God, such a great support. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right, all right. If you meet me and forget me, don't worry. Don't worry. Ain't nobody. I'm trying to get in just like you. <laughs> but if you meet Jesus and forget him, you have missed out on the what? A lifetime. A lifetime. A lifetime. A lifetime. <laughs> a lifetime. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Like you, Lord, 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 Lord,